What's up, fellas? <laughs> Sorry, I'm outside. Just got hit in the face with a gnat. I'm at the uh, old ranch here, the Rye Dog Farm. Um, this is our last time together until I see you guys uh, Thursday night. Can't wait. Sounds like we got a lot of dudes coming. So, uh, yeah, just I think it's just going to be great to see some of you guys and um, share a final word with you. I am going to take uh, Tyler on in two rounds of golf. So uh, those of you that know that he has been the reigning champion for quite a while. You know, if you're a praying type of dude, go ahead and lob one up for me. Um, I, ref- I kind of really feel like I need to win this time. So not just one of the two. I feel like I need to win two out of two. And I haven't golfed uh, for nine months. So could be rough. Anyway. Well, I thought all week, like, what's the last word I want to bring you? And I thought about just talking to you about my favorite passage of Scripture. Um, one that um, became so just after college. I was actually in a contemplative spirituality class in seminary. And uh, contemplative spirituality is where they try to teach you how to contemplate and listen to the voice of God. It's very meditative. And uh, this will not surprise you, but I actually was asked out of the class about six sessions in because uh, what they would do, they would send you off uh, kind of to walk around the seminary grounds out in the woods, and then they would ask you to, you know, to contemplate. And I'm not I'm not really good at contemplating. I like working and um, getting stuff done. So at the end of the class, about 35 minutes in, we'd all rally back around uh, inside the classroom, and then he would go around the circle and ask, you know, what we heard from God. And I'm, I'm very honest, I can't lie, I can't make up stuff. So I just said, uh, you know, week one, I'm like, yeah, I didn't get a whole lot, um, but maybe, you know, next, next time I'll be better. Second time goes around, I'm like, yeah, I'm still not, I'm not getting anything, I'm just staring at trees. It's nice, nice walk. And... Um, Third time, the whole class is kind of focused in. They're trying to coach me, you know, how to empty my mind, all that stuff. And um, on that week, I fell asleep, and then I fell asleep the next week. I just said, I literally came back and said, yeah, I've just been taking naps. And so the uh, this old Lutheran pastor is probably 85. He, he wasn't mean about it, but he just said it probably wasn't the right type of spirituality for me. And I said, I am agreeing with you on that. So I left the class and um, ended up taking a spiritual formation assessment and found out that I was an aesthetic. If you've never heard what that is, it's it's people that connect with God through their senses. Um, and so this guy, praise God, was going, hey, you probably feel like you connect with God way easier when you're out like in the woods, like even hunting. I'm like, bro, you're like tagging me. Yeah, I, I actually said like, I talk to God all the time when I'm outside, almost any time I'm outside. And he just went, yeah, that's the way you were designed to, to connect with God. Some some cats uh, like to connect in quiet studies with, you know, library books all around them. And um, they like silence. And other people can connect actually when there's more people around, more voices, more noises, or out looking at trees. So maybe a little encouragement to some of you guys that... Um, you know, if you felt like you don't really connect that well in religious settings, uh, I know some of you guys probably don't even, you know, it's not your favorite thing to go to church uh, on a Sunday or any time. You know, may, some of you may not like large groups of people. Some may like uh, very small. But, um, you know, at this stage of your life, don't worry about trying to, like, fit your spiritual formation into what other men do. Um or specifically what other women do. Oftentimes women have a completely different way of connecting with God. So um, hopefully that sets you free a little bit. But, um, you know, do connect with God in ways that make sense to you. If you're like me uh, and you really do tend to be more reflective and more philosophical when you're um, even working out, I, I really connect with God right after a workout, never during. I never talk to God when I'm like running or something like that more apt to talk to Satan when I'm running, but, um, so whatever works for you, consider, but I do remember during the same season, um, 
you know, one of the things that, like I would do is I would actually walk with my Bible. And uh, I, I love, I still love to memorize scripture. And the very first book I memorized um, in the New Testament was Philippians. And um, chapter two of Philippians became my favorite chapter because it framed um, what a guy referenced as the cruciform way of, of Jesus. And I know I shared this with you when we were at a men's retreat probably two or three years ago, but you know, old spiritualists would talk about the cruciform way. So it's the way of the cross. And it's always referenced as the Jesus way. Okay, So Jesus in Philippians 2, there's this progression where the scriptures say that Jesus was God, and then he lowered himself and he became a man. And then he became a certain type of a man. Thirdly, he became a servant. And then fourth, even lower, he went to the cross and died. So that's why we call it a cruciform. It's a, um, it's, it's a descending way of life where he just served everybody, right? Ultimately went to the cross for us. Um, and then it says, if you have any encouragement from your walk with God, any comfort from his love, take on the same attitude of Christ Jesus. So I'm going to read it out of this uh, fluffy translation called the Passion Translation. It says this, He existed in the form of God. Oh, wait, I want to start up a little, a little earlier. It says, um, And consider the example Jesus the Anointed One has set before us. Let, it, let his mindset become your motivation. It says, So he existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself. Okay, That's part of the cruciform way you empty yourself um, of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became a human. He humbled himself and became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man, and he was obedient. He was a perfect example, even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest names above all names. The authority of the name of Jesus will cause every knee to bow in reverence, and everything and everyone will one day submit to his name in the heavenly realm. Well, pretty cool. So it just says this is the way of Jesus, and... Uh, we should be like him. We should take the same mindset. So this week, um, I just wrote down four things that did not go as planned. And all of them were kind of interruptions, if you will. I didn't plan on them. Um, I was just going about my business, doing my own stuff. And uh, like, for instance, uh, many of you know we have an event space. And um, so we had a wedding this weekend. And... At this point in the game, our team generally handles everything really well. Like, uh, I'm not needed nearly as much as I used to be. Um, I've never, um, in all the work that we've done to renovate the building and to get the team together and to kind of coach the little spiritual church side of what we're doing into existence, I decided that I would not connect any of this to our personal finances. I wanted to have kind of a labor of love where... What I did here in Alton with the building and all the businesses, I just wanted it to be kind of like a pure giving back to the Lord. Um, and and so a lot of times, you know, if they say, hey, we could use some help at the, at the wedding event, I go, I'd love to help. So um, I did that. They said, you know, we probably, if you can come at three, we'd probably get you out of there by six, just help us during the rush. I'm like the backup bartender. And... Uh, and on this particular night, we had to hire a young gal from another bar. And uh, she came in wearing not appropriate clothing. Um, I could tell she had not done much work behind a bar. And so uh, we gave her a Post Commons shirt to wear uh, to cover things that were uncovered. Uh, I think she was used to more your standard uh, biker bar. And I had to take over in the pit, as we call it, like the head bartender. And, uh, and so I ended up being there till 2.30 a.m., um, not only closing down the bar, having to listen to another full wedding set of those silly wedding songs that they crank. And then I had to mop up. And uh, then this morning I got back up at 6 a.m. because we had a 10 a.m. event. And so I had to unload this U-Haul full of stuff, blah, blah, blah. All that to say, you can imagine um, when you're planning on getting out by 6 p.m. and you know, you end up having 
you know, when things just don't go as planned, it would be very normal for Hugh Halter to cop an attitude. Um, and yet in the, in that moment, I literally, I go back to the cruciform way. I kind of try to smile and go, all right, it's not what I had planned. Ended up having a fantastic talk with his bartender and our whole team. We actually had a good time together. It was, it was actually a good time to reconnect with our whole team. But they they know when they call me Big Poppy, when Big Poppy works that long and I keep the best attitude in the house, um, they take notice because they bring it up later. And um, they one of them texted me this morning because uh, they were all going to meet this morning at 6 along the U-Haul, and I got up early and just did it myself and texted them all, stay in bed, sleep in a little bit. and They just think that, like, I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Well, that's not my nature. Um, it really isn't. But I think about Jesus. I think about times where um, he lowers himself and serves. And so whenever I get a chance, if I can think about the Scripture, it, it does make a difference. I actually change my mindset and I just lock in and enjoy it. Another thing that happened this week is my son-in-law, Jesse, is a all-American running back, blew out his Achilles tendon. So I was going to golf today a little bit and uh, then I thought I'm going to finish watching golf when I get back from golfing, but Jesse blew out his Achilles. So guess who's watching Ezekiel, the nine-month-old? That's right, Big Poppy. So that didn't quite go as planned. And because of Philippians 2, I just took it on the chin again and uh, said I would love to watch Ezekiel and uh, thought about Jesus a little bit more. Southwest Airlines yesterday, uh, coming back, I was supposed to come back two days ago from Austin. And uh, Southwest, who never does this to me, Southwest delayed my flight. I was not able to hit a connection and I got stuck. And had to pay an extra night in Austin, Texas. And uh, again, uh, I love to cop an attitude with like airline things. I just feel like outside, they're just barely north of demonic. You know, if you travel a lot, you just, it's very easy to get an attitude. But I didn't because I think about Jesus and I, uh, like this is the truth. I, I am about to lose it. And then I think about Jesus. I'm like, calm down, Halter. Just go get a steak. Have another night in Austin. And then finally, uh, my in-laws are in town right now. And I love my in-laws, but uh, they're old school. And um, they forget sometimes I have a Mexican and African-American son-in-law. And so they say racist things. It's always awkward. We're always afraid about what's going to happen at the dinner table. Very political. And uh, and I've told my wife ten times, babe, just invite them out for two, three days max. Like they, they start to melt down at three days. They hate being here longer than three. And yet they always book it for five to six days. So here we are, day four, and they're they're killing us and they're losing their minds. And I... I tend to not blame them because they're just kind of old in-laws. Like, they, they can't change. But I, I can get a little bit miffed at my wife. And I can go, babe, it happened again. This is your fault. And there was a little moment where I was hating life. Uh, my father-in-law wants to come up and work with me. Just doesn't go well. And I just was starting to get a little uptight. I'm like, babe, can you just keep dad at home? Keep him out of my hair. So I can get some stuff done. And then, right at the last minute, because I could tell she was already losing it with them as well, I didn't say it. I just decided, yeah, I'll take that up. We'll work. It'll be a nice time. So four examples, guys. Those are real examples in just the last two days. So imagine how many times we have the opportunity to either be ourselves or to have the same attitude as Jesus and Where Jesus starts when he says, come and follow me, remember? So Jesus, who was God, becomes a man, and then he begins to be a servant, and then he dies on the cross. Where he starts with us, when he says, come and follow me, they go, okay. He he says, well, then pick up your, what, your cross. So our discipleship starts uh, any moment of any day when we have an opportunity to either be ourselves or to die. 
And so I always tell people I'm just a dead man, you know, or I'll say to myself in, in a moment where I'm about to, you know, be selfish or rage or whatever it is, I just go, I, I mutter, Halter, be a dead man. You died. Your life is now hidden in Christ, right? We've been crucified with Christ Jesus. So it says in Galatians, so it's no longer Hugh Halter who lives, but it's Christ who lives in me. So I begin in these moments with death. And then I oftentimes, what, what you're called to do is to serve, not try to get what you want. You're, you're dead, remember? You don't have to get what you want anymore. So you get to serve. And then you don't become a perfect man like Jesus was, but you do become a better man for sure. I'm, uh, I'm 71% better than I would have been without Jesus. I'm sure of it. Um, and when people go, wow, Halter, he just works for free. He does all this in Alton, doesn't take a paycheck, and he works these events. Uh, they go, that's a different type of dude. So there are some Benny. That's what interesting. When, when we go low, Jesus exalts us. When Jesus went low, the Father exalted him. When we die, somehow Jesus uh, exalts us, um, causes people to look at us. They might respect us more. And then we get to just shine the mirror back to Jesus and go, I'm only a little bit better because... In these moments, um, I choose Jesus, not Hugh Halter. So, so guys, that's a, that's a good last word. Um, just have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. And commit your life to a cruciform way. Look for ways to die. If, if God doesn't ask you to die in certain moments, then yeah, go have a heck of a time. Try to get what you can. Um, some rounds of golf. Have some, some selfish motives where... You just enjoy yourself, but, but when he gives you a chance to die to yourself for your wife or for your children, for a coworker, uh, for a stranger even, I think if you, uh, if you do choose death in those moments, you will live. You'll find life in new ways. So can't wait to see you guys, and uh, we will see you soon. Peace out.